All right, let's get started. So thank you everyone for joining us for our end of year or end of financial year recap, I should say. I didn't want to leave it too late in the month, as I know it starts to get pretty busy, particularly for anyone in, um, in AR and finance in particular. As always, um, welcome. My name is Patrick Coughlin. I'm the CEO at Creditor Watch. Feel free to connect with me and also the team on LinkedIn. So what are we going to cover today? We're going to look at um, some market insights and review around the small business risk review. That'll be for Q1, but I'll have some, you know, some commentary around it since then, what I've seen and um, what we're experiencing and, and what uh, people are sharing with us from the industry. I've got some Creditor Watch stats to share with you as well. I'm going to go through a whole list of new features, products and updates that we've rolled out in the last 12 months. I'll touch on a few um, new ones that we have coming up in the near future as well. I'll do a bit of a live demo of those that are relevant, go through a couple of new pages, um, be it features or products, but also the blog. Um, and I've got a couple of end of financial year tips for you as well. As always, please do ask questions along the way. We've got a few people assisting, listening in to answer questions as we go through it. And if there's time at the end, I will try to get to any of those questions that we have missed. Um, if we can't get through to them during the session itself, however, I will um, certainly be in touch with you or one of the other Credit Watch employees will be in touch. Slides, we will send that through with a recording of the webinar within the next 24 hours as well. And um, we're looking at a session of about 30 minutes so we can either get back to work or go grab some lunch. So touch on Creditor Watch quickly, Australia's leading commercial credit reporting bureau, well over 50,000 customers now. We offer a full end-to-end -end suite of credit management products. So if you're bringing on new customers, you can use Apply Easy, which is an online credit application, rather than people filling out a credit-based, uh, sorry, a paper-based credit application form, get them to fill it out online. We verify all their information, run a credit report, tell you whether you should be doing business with them and ultimately add them to your monitoring list with Creditor Watch. Um, that's got all the credit reporting and monitoring and alerts within it. PPSR Logic, so if you are registering on the PPS register, um, we can integrate that with Creditor Watch or with Applyeasy or as a standalone portal to allow you to do everything PPS related, create, manage, renew, bulk upload, et cetera please um, have a look at that if you are interested or are currently using a PPS solution. Datalogic Plus, so that's for your ongoing receivables management. Have a look at your age trial balance as a whole. Identify sections of that that are at risk because they're full of high risk clients or they're paying you slowly and paying everyone else fast. It's a great way to prioritize your collections and then direct to due diligence. So this is a combination of bankruptcy information on individuals behind a company and also looking at receiving email alerts when adverse cross-directorships occur. So you could be monitoring uh, John, Smith, uh, John Smith Construction. John Smith is the director. Um, that company is all fine, clear, looks, looks pretty. Um, however, he's got three or four other companies that he's a director of that are all going into administration, becoming delinquent, having multiple adverse registered against them. With adverse cross-directorship alerts turned on, we will send you email alerts for that so that you're not left, um, not left, you know, dealing with one business that looks like it's all um, fine and uh, not much of a credit risk, but in fact is the last sort of bastion in that crumbling empire. So end of, my, end of financial year market insights and review. So for those of you that, that, that dialed in for our last small business risk review, which would have been back in April, um, I will touch on some of those uh, numbers that we saw. So obviously a significant increase in court actions and defaults. I almost named this particular small business risk review, the doom and gloom small business risk review. However, as you'll see, as we go through it, that's not actually the case. So a big increase in court actions and defaults across the board, um, except WA, which is 
um, is rare, but they seem to be doing quite well at the moment thanks to the renewed resources boom and the high prices of coal, um, and particularly of that quality coal that they produce. Um, however, despite this, there's been a decrease in insolvencies. Um, so where Q2 2018 was the worst period since the GFC, um, when you compare it to the most recent quarter that we just had, it's down almost 30%. So it's, we're, from an insolvency administration perspective, um, Australia is in, in great health, looks fantastic. Companies um, are almost at their lowest in the last um, sort of 20 years. Um, from a bankruptcy point of view, so looking at you know individuals, consumers, directors who are becoming bankrupt, this is at a 24 year low. Um, and there were falls in all states. So from those two perspectives, really, really positive signs. However, when you look at payment defaults and court actions rising, we know that they are the first sort of stepping stones towards a administration or, or a bankruptcy. So it could be the potential, uh, it could be that potentially we are at the bottom of um, oh, a trough, so to speak. Um, and uh, we're looking at an increase in uh, insolvencies and bankruptcies in the near future. Um, however, I would like to think that there's certainly been a post-election bump, both in the property um, market, but also from a business uh, sentiment point of view. Um, people seem to be extremely happy that, um, uh, well, in the commercial circles in business, that the Liberals have come back in, will provide some stability. Um, and as a result, there seems to be a lot more going on from a from a from a work perspective. Um, we're we're hearing that you know there are more orders coming in, bigger orders. Um, people seem to have been treading water for for months and months. Um, obviously, with the Victorian and New South Wales state elections, you know, middle and late last year, all the way through to the federal election um, last month, it seems like people weren't really investing, they weren't hiring, they weren't buying. However, they weren't necessarily going backwards either. They were treading water waiting to see what the results were gonna be. And as a result of, um, you know, particularly the Liberal win in the federal election recently, um, people are getting back on with it. They've got a bit more confidence in, um, I guess, how the Liberals will manage the economy in the uh, short to medium term. So that's really good to, to see and hopefully that staves off any insolvencies and bankruptcies that we see increase over the coming months and year. Uh, from a Creditor Watch perspective, our top five highest risk industries based on um, adverse information being registered against businesses and companies in these, in uh, from an industry point of view, are as so retail trade number one, probably no surprises. To be honest, there's no surprises here for a top five. Uh, professional scientific and technical services, that's, you know, usually I would expect to see that at number five, so that's probably the only surprise in this particular list. Construction, we know that is always a high risk industry to deal with. Um, we have a number of Supplies to the construction industry, but also large building in uh, large building companies, large construction companies who use us to monitor their you know their own suppliers and their subcontractors, for example, um, and they are certainly saying you know two years from now the pipeline of work certainly starts to dry up. So you know there is a long lead time um, from a construction point of view for those bigger projects. Um, we know that you know housing and residential uh, you know, office buildings past the sort of 18 month, two year mark, there isn't much that has been locked in to be built. Um, so we're starting to see a number of our clients in particular look to um, diversify exactly where they are and get more into you know, um, office and commercial building projects as well. Wholesale trade and manufacturing rounding off number four and five there for our top five highest risk industries. Insolvency, so this is just a nice graph to look at when we're comparing uh, or looking at those stats that I just shared with you earlier. Um, so obviously Q3 2017 um, had the largest, I think I mentioned Q2 by accident there. And it's, if you would have put a trend number, if you put a trend line there, you'd see we're certainly going down through to Q1 2019. So I'm looking forward to getting the stats from ASIC um, in early or mid July and getting that small business risk review up and running for you guys who are interested. 
some additional sort of insight and commentary here from um, external uh, external organisations. So ASIC, when they looked at their external administrations for the past 12 months, um, particularly when dealing with SMEs, they flagged two important um, things to note. Uh, of those that went into administration, 86% of them had assets of $100,000 or less. So if you do get a chance to have a look at balance sheets, that's something you should be having um, taking note of. And then 79% had less than 20 employees. Um, probably not surprising that, you know, sub 20 employees are high risk, but 80% of them um, is certainly showing you that, you know, those small businesses, almost micro businesses, which is, you know, one to five employees um, are organisations to take notice of. Um, the NAB Small Business Survey indicated both a decline in confidence and conditions for the year. Um, but I know that the most recent one, I'm not sure if they've just released it or if I've just heard about it, um, there's certainly been a jump in, um, in confidence off the back of most likely that federal election being over and done with. Banking Royal Commission obviously here has resulted in tighter lending, more so in the consumer space, but also in the commercial space as well. Um, meaning SMEs are forced to use their own funds or seek capital injections from non-bank lenders, um, often at higher rates. Some Credit Watch insights from us. Um, it's been a fantastic year in terms of growth. We've put on an additional 2,000 plus small businesses who use us and over 500 corporates joining us in the last 12 months alone. Um, There's still about two weeks left, less than, yeah, about two weeks left. Um, in the month, so we're, we're pushing hard, still very busy, and we'll have no doubt a number of new corporates joining us. Um, we had a big cold calling session this morning with our New South Wales team, which is always great to see everyone pushing through to the end of financial year. On the payment default side of things, um, we're seeing that the number of payment defaults being registered each month has increased by more than 100%. Now that's down to two things. One, we've made significant changes to um, our user experience, the user interface, to make it much easier for people to register defaults, to also flag, you know, if you integrate with Xero or MYOB or upload your age trial balance into Creditor Watch, we'll proactively flag um, customers that you could register defaults against. So that's made a big difference. We've made it easier. However, there's also been a natural increase in the number of defaults being registered as well. Um, and from a risk alerts point of view, so obviously for all of our customers who monitor their own debtors, their own customers, we send them email alerts when um, an important change has taken place. In the last 12 months, we've sent over 200,000 emails out to our customer base which is fantastic to see that we are being proactive and flagging those high risk businesses that you need to be aware of. So running through um, new features, products and updates, it's probably been our biggest year in terms of development um, and innovation. You know, Creditor Watch, we are coming up to being nine years old in uh, August. So two months from now. Um, in that time, we've grown from three of us being involved in the business, um, drawing ideas and, and, and um, user interface and product, you know, product on a whiteboard through to having 70 plus with, with more staff in the pipeline due to be hired, 70 plus staff across three states. Uh, obviously 50,000 plus, well over 50,000 plus customers as well. Um, so it's no mean feat to, to have, you know, your biggest innovation year, but that's certainly been a big focus for us. And it hasn't just been a focus on um, new products. Um, there's certainly been a big focus on data as well. So I've obviously spoken about um, payment default information being um, increased by 100% month uh, compared to, uh, if you compare, um, September onwards, so we're seeing a 100% increase on those September number. Um, but we're also looking at information such as ANZIC industry data. So you should see now that most, most credit reports that you look at will have an ANZIC industry um, data on it. So saying that they're from the, you know, the construction or manufacturing industry, for example, um, and that is growing every month. As a result of that, 
um, we're able to provide not only a payment predictor showing how that company pays their bills, right, that company in particular, but we're also able to compare it against the industry. So we can say that, for example, um, you know, company ABC Constructions is paying their bills on average 65 days overdue. However, the industry average is 45 days overdue. So it's a really good way for you to understand how to deal with or what to expect from that particular customer or prospect that you're, you're speaking with. Um, from a support point of view, we've doubled the number of um, people in our support and account management teams. We now have um, a, a, a growing account management team. We've got another person joining um, next month um, in servicing clients across Australia. From a support point of view, um, that's that first, uh, first level of support if you call into Creditor Watch. Um, that team is based in Sydney on the phones, on emails, on live chat. We've uh, invested in that team as well. So we're really focused on ensuring that, you know, people have a question about how to use the service. They want to get more out of it. Um, they want to refresh their customer list. or they want, you know, a bit of a, a uh, they've got a query about a credit report, for example. Um, we want to make sure that we're able to address, um, address those questions, concerns, as soon as possible, um, and and we've seen a, a huge uptick in the number of you know resolved tickets and and queries and whatnot as a result of increasing the size of our support and account management teams. From a website performance point of view, if we were to compare the speed at which a credit report loads um, to June uh, May June 2018, we're looking at them loading at about 300% faster. And I got the double, I got our dev team to double check that number because it seemed actually too quick, but we did have instances where credit reports were taking, you know, 25, 30 seconds to load as a result of all the data. Um, we had one of our developers in particular work on that for almost nine months. Um, he became a performance master. And as a result, we're seeing the benefits of that. So you should be seeing those reports load a hell of a lot faster. And we are always working on other parts of the business as well. Um, just to give you some insight, coming up in the next probably three to six months, for those of you, you using Datalogic Plus, we're gonna make some significant changes to that, not just speed, but also visual um, changes and the data that's being provided in that as well. That's a big project for us upcoming. Looking at new features in particular, so this is probably the top you know, three or four that we see here. PPSR Logic was a huge one that our team worked on and delivered late last year, um, giving you the ability to create, manage and renew registrations. Um, anything you need to do with the PPSR is able to be done in PPSR Logic. Um, KYC tools, so that's been a, been a, a more recent, you know, first half of, the, of this year, um, this calendar year, I should say, focusing on delivering um, KYC tools, so things like an ultimate beneficial owner report. One click allows you to see who's the ultimate shareholder of a company, if it's particularly if it's a, uh, a complex corporate structure. Um, AML CTF, so anti-money laundering, counter-terrorism financing, the ability to screen individuals against the relevant um, databases that exist around the world. Um, and then of course, PEP and sanctions checks as well. So all of these come together you know, for those of us, uh, for those of our customers in, um, you know, finance, um, gambling, bullion trade, for example, um, you're legislated to run these types of reports, so we can tick the box for you there. Um, however, what we're seeing is more and more organisations are starting to want to do this sort of due diligence um, as an additional layer of um, risk mitigation. So that's all available within Creditor Watch or via API. Uh, sorry, API version two has been released. Um, Directed due diligence. We'll be making some additional changes to this in in the coming um, in the coming quarter or so. Um, where we'll be uh, combining bankruptcy plus and adverse cross directorships into a single offering. Um, plus, we will have something additional on top of that as part of the offering. So watch this space around director due diligence. Uh, build your own credit report. So rather than you, if you like to order a, a credit score and a payment predictor and you want to refresh an ASIC extract, usually that would take three clicks and have three you know, page refreshes, so to speak. Um, you can now just do that in the custom 
credit report builder that you'll see within a credit report, pick and choose exactly what you want and it will order it all in one go for you. And the last one here is a new risk alert emails that we released um, in the last month. Um, much more interactive, visually appealing, um, and, and obviously flagging, you know, high versus medium versus other alerts that are coming through. I think the big thing out of that as well, the feedback we were getting from our customer base was that they didn't realise they could actually click on the links within the email. So hopefully we've made it a bit more obvious that, hey, yes, when an email alert comes through, click on the link of the business, we'll take you through to that credit, credit report, which is included in your subscription. So you can actually get the full picture of that change. For example, how much is that court action or that payment default that has been registered? Who is the administrator that has been appointed? What are their contact details, etc.? So that's a view of that. If you haven't already received one, um, you can see flagging a nice summary for you straight away and then just breaking up the different types of alerts a little bit better, um, making it more obvious that you can view the directorship change, the court action, the credit score, etc. So please keep an eye out for that if you haven't already received one. So live demonstration, I'll just jump through a couple of the things that I mentioned there before. PPSR Logic obviously is a standalone website, can be used just on its own. So if you don't want to use Creditor Watch or Apply Easy, that is fine. You can use us just for your PPSA registrations. Jump onto the website, have a look at the benefits. We've got some testimonials on here as well. Really easy to consume. The blog, as always, keep up to date with that. We um, usually send out a newsletter each month with the latest articles. However, you can jump on there and have a look at all of the articles as they come through. Ultimate Beneficial Owner Report. There's a little bit more information on this particular report, how it works, why you should use it. KYC and AML. Um, I've got an article that I've put up late last month as well, which takes you through essentially the basics of it. What is it? What does it stand for? Um, you know, why should I use it? Some acronyms, because there's plenty of them in this particular process in particular. Um, and I also did a webinar on there, so feel free to link through, uh, click through to the webinar itself. So some end of financial year tips, quite simple. It's busy for everyone. There's lots to do, I know, but if you are a Credit Watch customer, there's some basic things that our account management and support teams can help you with. It's a really good time to refresh your monitoring list. If you're not doing this on a regular basis yourself or with Credit Watch, it's a great time to say, hey, I haven't updated this in a while. Send it through to us. We'll replace what's currently in there so you've got fresh um, customers in there, you're not receiving an alerts on customers you're no longer dealing with and you are receiving alerts on customers you're dealing with in case any have been missed over the last 12 months. Run a data wash, this is great particularly for larger organisations if you've got you know hundreds or thousands of, uh, of customers, we'll identify high risk customers for you, we can clean up your database, ensure you've verified you know exactly which ABNs, ACNs you should be trading with um, we can even, even append you know, a, a credit score, for example, if you want to go that far. So it's a fantastic way to refresh and get started for the new financial year. As always, there's never a perfect time or an ideal time to register a default. However, it's a great way to collect money. So if you are you know, writing off any outstanding debts coming into the end of the financial year, I would highly recommend you send a final demand letter that's available within your account and you register a default before the end of the month. It's a great sort of final um, step in the debt collection process. What it will do is it'll put a black mark against that particular debtor. It will say that, you know, they owe you money, um, how much money they owe. It will then send an email alert to any other supplier, any other Creditor Watch customer who happens to be monitoring that particular business. Um, and what you'll likely see is that other Creditor Watch customer, that other supplier will go, great, great to know, I'm putting these guys on stop. We'll say, hey, you're on stop because you owe ABC Proprietary Limited money. 
So go and get that debt settled and then I'll open up your account again. So very powerful way to get paid and a good way to end off financial year on a high. And of course, always review customer credit terms and limits, who is paying you well, who is not paying you well. So it's not just a risk, um, a risk process to go through. Obviously, you wanna have a look at those clients who are always slow paying, for example, or hard to get a hold of, potentially, you know, change them from a 30 day to a 14 day account and reduce their um, their credit limit down. However, on the flip side, for those customers that pay you well, um, they always pay you on time, always communicate, have a look at their credit report, do a review and consider increasing their credit limits, consider increasing their, their credit terms and see if they start to buy more for, from you. At the end of the day, you wanna be doing business with companies that pay well um, and avoiding those that are um, notoriously slow. So we've got some upcoming webinars here. We've got the fantastic dev team. This is from Halloween, as you can set, as you can see. Um, we've got an API integrations webinar with our CTO, Joseph Fatuli, who's circled there. Um, and then we'll also be doing um, a webinar on the type of trusts to trust. Um, additional resources, as always, get in contact with us um, if you've got any questions from a sales um, or just information point of view. Don't be shy, we're always keen um, to respond to those. And then this is our last slide that we'll see here. Um, this Thursday night, I will be participating in the Vinnie's CEO sleep out to raise money for the St. Vincent de Paul Society. Um, Ultimately, what they're trying to do is break the devastating cycle of homelessness. So I'm keen to get your support. If, you, um, if, you're, if you're able, um, it could be in the form of, you know, sharing the stories um, of those that, you know, have been, have been helped by the Vinnie's crew. Um, jump on our, uh, either on our website or on our social media channels and you'll see we've put up some links there. Um, at the very least, if you can just share or like those stories, that, that just creates more awareness. If you're able to donate, um, I'm, I'd be forever grateful and, and appreciate that. We've, uh, well, I've raised uh, $5,616 as of about half an hour ago with a goal of uh, $6,000, but if I hit $6,000, I'll increase that goal and I'll keep going until we can't take any more donations. Some statistics here, um, homelessness certainly does not, um, does not discriminate. You know, there's 15,000 plus children facing homelessness on a regular basis. Um, people over 65 sleeping rough have risen um, by 30% and over 250,000 people seek help from homelessness services like um, St. Vincent's de Paul. It's freezing, it is cold, it is wet. Imagine if you um, you know, your son, your daughter, your grandma, your mother, whoever it is, was facing the prospect of sleeping out on the streets with no shelter, no warmth, no food. Um, any any sort of help that you can provide by either spreading the word, by spreading the word, or donating um, to a really worthy call um, would be fantastic. So I thank you for that. There's a link there if you want to um, donate or if you want some more information. Um, take it'll take you through to the, uh, the 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 Credit Watch page that I've got set up. Um, for that, as I said, Thursday night, if everyone could pray for um, for clear weather, it's going to be cold, no doubt, um, but I'd prefer if it didn't rain. So one last poll question, sorry, our first and last poll question, um, just so I know, I'm hopefully doing a good job. Did you find today's webinar insightful? If you've got any other questions, please do use the questions tab. Um, so far, a couple have come through and have been answered, but if you've got any more that you want to put in, um, I can certainly answer them along the way. Um, if you didn't find today's webinar insightful or useful, please put in there what you would like to see or what you were expecting to see, um, and then I can be in contact or I can get someone to be in contact to let you know or to, to, to provide what you were looking for. And if I missed something that we said we were going to discuss, I do apologize, um, but hopefully it was, a, it was a nice high level summary for you today anyway.
All right, thank you for those people who did let me know. That's really it for today. Um, so I wanted to thank you for attending. Um, as I said, we're always open for um, advice, feedback from, from our customers or even from our um, you know, people who aren't customers. Please do get in contact with us and um, keep an eye out for the upcoming webinars, API integration, um, who to deal with from a trust perspective. And of course, just general updates that come through via email um, or our social media channels. Thanks again for joining us.